For everybody at home, this is how not to get rid of a hornet's nest. So, yeah, they're gonna be pretty upset here, guys. I just gotta come get it. No, here we go, actually, you got one coming in. Coming in for a landing. Well, can you cut these branches off of right it? Down. Cut I'm the branches cut it, off cut of it, it so it goes in the garbage bag. <laughs> well, I cut the branch. Come on, man, what are you doing? Working here today on a new pond at the building, we figured we'd show you our morning meeting. So today's game is for $25 cash and some scratch off tickets. Each one of these cups has their initial on the bottom, so they don't know which one's theirs. And the goal is 90 seconds, whichever cup has the most balls in it, wins the prize. And they're gonna be shooting the balls out of these cute little unicorns. Okay, Jack, set the timer, 90 seconds. Go. Let's go. I have been looking forward to this pond build for a while. We've had our display gardens at our store here in Denville, New Jersey for about seven or eight years. And they do really well for us because people get a chance to walk into the gardens, they see different sized ponds, and it helps them imagine that in their own backyard. The problem I've had is people want to see something larger. Today with this pond installation, I want to do something that's over the top, giving people an option of a water garden that is well beyond our standard pond. With our Tranquility series and our Deluxe, we've got a pretty big differential here. This was a seven by 10, great little garden pond, fits into a tight space, still giving you plenty to look at. We've got a beautiful waterfall, a fair amount of water in here. This is really for goldfish, shabunkins, that kind of stuff. Even with it being our smallest package, still has a lot of room for our aquatic planting. We've got a nice lily in there, some edge treatment over here, all professional grade equipment like our skimmers and biofalls. What this pond does mostly is sell this pond. Going from the Tranquility up to the Deluxe, you're getting twice the amount of pond. It goes from seven by 10 to now 10 by 14. Much larger pond a larger waterfall, you've got a larger pump, everything in this is larger, and this is probably one of our more popular sized ponds. What we used to have above that was our the elite version of this, which added a stream to it and also included the fish cave. The problem is people weren't really seeing a correlation between those two. It didn't look all that much bigger because the pond itself was the same footprint, just had a stream on it. So it didn't work as well as I had hoped it would, which is why we've torn it out and now we're putting our Serenity Series pond in here. We're talking 14 by 14 footprint, larger custom waterfall. We're gonna do an intake base skimmer over here, which we don't have an example of here. I'm excited for that. We're gonna really incorporate this patio right into the edge of it, get a nice deep section. It's gonna be a fully custom pond large boulders completely planted up. I know it's gonna look impressive, but the thing I'm really excited about is to see what people's reactions are. It's going to be a much more expensive pond, that's for sure, but if you don't show it, you can't sell it. Now that the old pond is out of here, we can spray out our outline for the footprint, start our excavation, and make this thing happen. That was some tough digging. Now we've got a footprint for our pond and it is looking really good. There's a layer of sand going down because this soil was extremely rocky. We got all the big rocks out of here, anything sharp out of the bottom, made sure we went over it real good. Now we're putting a good layer of sand in there just to protect our liner. Drew and Wally got the intake excavated. This is where our aqua blocks are going to go down inside here. And at the far end, there's gonna be a pump vault 
We're gonna have two pumps inside there. One is gonna run the waterfall. The other one is gonna run some jets doing circulation inside the pond. It has a really cool shape, but that means if we don't get the water moving out of these cove areas we're going to end up with some dead spots we've got our waterfall coming in this way it's going to want to push the water straight across to our intake leaving this whole side uncirculated so we'll have jets that are going surface level pushing water out as well as, as down the bottom we want to get that water moving at the bottom of the pond up into suspension so it could send any solids or organics into our intake where it could then be filtered going up to our biofalls i told you this was a tough dig these are the rocks we pulled out of the bottom of the pond there was so much rock in this excavation. We'll be able to use some of this stuff when we build the pond. A lot of it's gonna be trash though. So these are things that can substantially slow down the job when you've got really rocky conditions, which will force you to make some adjustments in your time it's gonna to take to accomplish the project, as well as putting a substrate down that's gonna protect your liner. So things to keep in mind if you're building a pond in rocky conditions, it can be tough, but not impossible. Once we get our sand layer in, then we're gonna go ahead and put our fabric in. We're gonna double up on fabric here because of the soil conditions. Once that's done, we can install our 45 mil EPDM rubber liner. And then in the areas where we're gonna be setting our large, large boulders, we'll put another layer of fabric on top of our liner, create that sandwich that's gonna really protect that stuff. I am loving the way this is turning out. So when constructing a basin, whether it be for an intake bay or in a pondless waterfall, we always use two layers of our protective fabric. First layer is underneath the liner, then we have the liner, and then we've got another layer of fabric. And this protects the liner from the blocks here. Again, not that they're sharp, but we are gonna be setting a couple of larger boulders on the edges of this. This is gonna be like our skimmer. So we need to really disguise all of this we don't want to see any plastic we don't want to see any liner so we need to make sure that when we put a big heavy rock on one of these things that one of the edges or anything that's underneath or on top is not going to be puncturing holes in this liner i would be so psyched to be a fish in this pond we are getting some serious amount of rock work done here i love the big boulders inside the pond especially ones like this that go from the bottom all the way out and about a foot above the water surface Back in here is where we're gonna have that stacked stone wall, nice concave area right here. And we're gonna bring the patio right out over it. So it's gonna be a super clean edge right down to the bottom. The fish will be able to swim up vertical. This would be a great spot for hand feeding. We're actually going to be building lights into the wall as well as some jets to get circulation coming out of this spot here. Here you can see we're stubbing out for a jet over here. We use one inch flex PVC. This is gonna be about three inches below the water surface. Get some agitation on the surface, moving all that debris towards our intake. Got another jet tucked in down right by our fish cave. Speaking of which, there's our fish cave. Those two jets are gonna be moving the water that's on the bottom, forcing it up into suspension, sending all the debris that way into our intake bay. Something we like to do on the larger ponds is have a rock out in the middle somewhere that goes from the bottom all the way out and crest the water surface. It's a really nice look when you've got the water meeting the rock all the way around like you would see in nature. We've got a few more hours of rock work to do inside the pond here. Then we can turn around and focus on our waterfall section. This is challenging because our access is only in between these trees right here, which means we've got to stage all of our boulders behind the trees and up behind the machine. It also makes it difficult because we're stockpiling our soil behind us that we're digging out for that pond area as well as the waterfall sections. So it gets real tight, real fast. You can get a feel for how much room is needed when you're building something like this in someone's backyard. Not to mention how much disruption you do to the landscape. These are things you wanna consider when you're going to have a project like this installed. All of the outside forces that come into play, access, staging, how much disruption you're gonna have in the landscape. But luckily I own the place, so it doesn't much matter. Let's get back to work.
right now Drew is working on doing some stone work in the gap here. That's going to support our waterfall stone, which is going to be about this high. My plan is to set this weir the same height as this side of the rock so I can get some water coming around this side. What I see it doing is spilling off this edge because it is leaning forward, actually hitting this rock and then running back into the pond. So we're going to get our main waterfall right here, but we're also going to sneak some water around this side so we can get a very cool effect going on over here. I'm going to show you why we use concrete cloth. This is the back side of our waterfall. Right behind here, we've got a chipmunk den. I just saw a chipmunk actually pushing this stuff out. This is all acorns. They were all buried back in here behind the stone wall. So if we didn't put our concrete cloth in behind this to protect it, that chipmunk could come right through and just chew on this liner behind these enormous boulders. And you're talking about really an impossible repair without this whole waterfall coming back apart. Now we always recommend concrete cloth. It's costly. It's not a cheap option, but it's a lot less expensive than coming in here with heavy equipment and tearing an entire waterfall back out because of damage from rodents or roots. And that's just something we want to avoid altogether. Okay, so this looks like a mess from here. But in reality, it's the way it has to be for this to be a protected liner. So at the very back of our rock work, this is the rock work for our waterfall that's going into our pond. This is the concrete cloth. You guys may have heard me talk about this before. We use this as a rodent or root barrier. It is a heavy cloth infused with concrete. When it gets wet, it hardens, makes a nice impenetrable shell so the chipmunks and all those, that kind of stuff can't get to the liner. In front of that, we've got our non-woven fabric. Again, we've got two layers of this. We're really just doing a good job protecting our liner. Then we've got our 45 mil EPDM, which is the pond liner. So essentially, this comes up into our excavation and then we've got our waterfall liner, which is tucked in a couple feet down, locking it in, giving us our overlap into the pond. And then on the other side of that, we've got more fabric. So we're creating a big sandwich of protection for our liners. This way we just do the best we can to make sure that we don't have any issues down the line. Now that all our liner is set, we can set our grade up behind our weir for our next step of waterfall that's gonna be behind that. Now we're gonna have some pooling areas. I like to have the grade anywhere from three to four inches lower than the top of the weir stone. That's gonna allow for our gravel to go in and then have some pooling. If I want to have a deeper pool, I'll make it deeper. Standard, I usually do about three or four inches below the top of the weir, giving us plenty of room to work. Also, the other thing is if you didn't leave yourself a recessed area below the waterfall weir, what would happen is the liner comes up and it's the same height as the weir. It gets like a weird fold in it. Then you've got rubber popping up through the gravel and it just doesn't look very good. So if you leave it down, it gives you enough room to get that liner down, get some ballast on it, and you're going to get some stream area in your pool. Now this is what I wanted to see in this spot. I love everything about it. I love the waterfall. It was missing that wow factor before and this is beyond what I thought you guys were gonna give me. I'm typically jealous of all the ponds I see. Now you guys are gonna be jealous of mine. <laughs> The favorite pond here was always the middle pond. It was just a really nice pond with a really great size. The one up top was the same size. It had a stream, but it really wasn't a wow factor. So I've been after Jack for about two years now to change it. I think now when you come in, this is gonna be the new favorite and you're just gonna gravitate to this one. The waterfall, the stream, it's fantastic. For me, the impact of that new display starts down here. Coming down the front walk, you enter our gardens. First thing you see is our Tranquility Pond. Seven by 10, really nice, clean, 18 inch drop waterfall. Beautiful little pond, fits in most smaller backyards. Then next to that, we always had our Tranquility Deluxe, which steps up to 
upon twice the size of the 10 by 14, larger waterfall, a lot more room for fish and plants. But right in between those trees is where I wanted people to look up and see what is up there. That looks a lot bigger than this. Essentially drawing them up through the garden and you walk up around here and you really can't even see it yet. You see like little glimpses of a waterfall there, some kind of water, and then it just opens up into this beautiful pond. Customers have been asking us to put a larger pond in for quite a number of years. The pond that was here, which was our Tranquility Elite, it was a 10 by 14, same size pond as the one down below it, but it had a stream and waterfall. The problem is it just wasn't like a, it wasn't really an impact pond. We come up here and it looked nice, but it wasn't as inspiring as that one in the middle. So I knew when we did something up here, we had to do something that was gonna be a wow factor. And I wanted all the bells and whistles in this one. We ended up with about a 14 by 20 pond. We've got a custom built intake skimming bay. We've got huge boulders in this one. These are all massive rocks. We're talking rocks up to like two tons. Those are some big, big boulders. Then you're looking at doing major grade change work, larger pumps, larger cascades. We've got jets in here, underwater lighting everywhere, big fish cave, and we carried those big boulders down inside the pond. I love that look. To me, it gives that feel of like a glacier pond where you see these massive boulders going down into the deep parts. I like the structure and the aesthetics of a pond, first and foremost. Of course, we want to have it so that it stays clean and fish can live in it. But for me, I have to be inspired when I come out to a water feature to want to sit there and take it in and really appreciate all the work and the detail that went into something and that's what this pond is about. Having this clean semi-circular edge going right down to the bottom is most definitely something that I wanted. We did some beautiful stonework back in here. Lights are actually built into the stone wall underneath here as well as some underwater jets that are circulating water in the bottom of the pond. But what a cool effect to go walk right up to it and then when the fish are feeding during the season, they can swim right up in here and congregate. You can get down, you can hand feed them. A lot of interaction. I like interactive areas in the pond. That's why we really went with that. You can see the rippling water over on this side. That is a jet pushing that water out. Because of the informal shape of the pond, we've got to consider that there could be dead zones if we don't push that water around which would then collect debris. That jet pushing that water out just keeps it moving over towards our intake. Same thing over here with our aeration. We are down in the bottom of the pond, turning that pond over, and it's also acting as a jet in itself because as it's agitating at the top, it's forcing water that way, again, keeping it moving into the skimmer. Got another aerator over there doing the same function. That's gonna double as our winter de-icer. It's up on the shallower area. It might only be 18 inches deep. In the wintertime, we'll shut this one down run that one full steam. That'll keep a hole open in the ice for gas exchange and allow oxygen to come back in when we're breaking surface tension. In between these really nice big boulders submerged, we've got a fish cave tucked back in there. It's actually a fish tunnel. The fish can swim through and they can pop back out over there. That's gonna be a fun little playground for them and a great place to get out of the sun or away from predators. When we get into these larger ponds, you can pretty much walk all over this thing and all around it. You got small kids, they love exploring around ponds like this because they could be hopping all over boulders. This intake is working fantastically. The water's being drawn in. This rock is here for a reason. It actually creates an eddy on the backside. So the debris comes in and it just kind of swirls around in there. You can easily skim it out. And my favorite part about this type of skimmer, the fish can swim in and out of here. And during the season, you would see them probably hanging out right here like a little fish treadmill because it's got a current coming in. For me, the centerpiece is this massive boulder waterfall. We've got these rocks that are just flanking either side of these beautiful cascades. The water is raining down all over these weir rocks here. This is most definitely my favorite waterfall. The way I pitched the rock, I wanted some water coming off here and this boulder here has actually got a nice angle to it. It's just hitting that, shedding off and raining back inside. Then we've got that cleaner waterfall on the left side. So we spread that out about five feet wide in that whole area, really giving that great impact at the bottom of the waterfall. Now, if we were working in a flat backyard, we would have to create a berm from here all the way around to there to make it look natural. And that's gonna involve bringing in more soil, probably building a wall on the backside to support all that. But luckily here, we had the grade to work with. This is called pudding stone. It's native to New Jersey. It's a conglomerate stone, you can see there's a lot of small little pebbles that are inside here that have been crushed together by the glaciers. This little cove right here is 18 inches deep. The fish will be able to swim right up inside here underneath these falls and hang out here. I offset this rock from that one, leaving a gap on purpose so I could send some flow that way. And then the jet's pushing against it, so we're getting great circulation going 
across the pond here and then the rest of it is just shoving it right across this way keeping that top nice and clear back behind the main waterfall we've got a nice deep six inch pool followed by some really beautiful cascading waterfalls tucked in between all these large boulders we've got stuff that's falling off straight hitting other rocks coming back in on itself like you would see in nature again more of that up top here my idea with the frame rock here on the right not only is it framing in the main waterfall but it's also pitched in and forward a little bit so it would catch some water and send it off the side i envision this being a nice little bird bath but a clean one where you see the water is just kind of dribbling off the front side that's okay because it's all inside liner but it's collecting like an inch and a half deep pool right there the great part about putting a water feature in the backyard is you are providing a water source for the surrounding environment bees dragonflies frogs all the animals that live in your area will be utilizing your backyard habitat to survive and up at the top here we've got our biofalls which is just completely disguised by this gorgeous waterfall taking this large flat rock and angling it in provided us the ability to bring the water up on it and then it turns back in on itself using the angle of the rock to do that that is really a clean looking waterfall I mean I've hiked through woods and seen waterfalls exactly like that so I think we did a pretty good job of trying to mimic nature right there we've got a little secret waterfall just sneaking around the side here back into there it's cool to have interesting stuff like that because as years go on you're sitting out here looking at your waterfall you start to notice those little things and just taking those little pieces enjoying the fruits of water artistry guys I couldn't be happier with the way this entire water feature turned out my team came together we pulled off an awesome awesome finished product here tell me what you think down in the comments now a pond like this is going to be expensive something that's gonna have this size footprint with the custom stonework and the jets the lights the intake the big boulders the big boulder waterfall you're talking somewhere in the $60,000 range. I know that's a lot of money, but I wanted to make something impactful up here that people can get a real feel for what's possible. And that number can be affected by site conditions as well. So again, I was talking about the flat backyard. If we've got to come in and build this mountain of a berm to make this waterfall happen, it will affect the price, but it's going to be somewhere in that range. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you want to learn more about what's possible for your yard, if you live in the northern New Jersey area, go to our website. I've got a link down below showing our pricing page, giving an idea on what some of this stuff might cost if you're looking to do a water feature project. Of course, hit that subscribe button. Come on back every Friday, 4 p.m. We are here bringing you beautiful water features and water feature projects. I will see you guys on the next one.